By my troth, a good song. And an ill singer, my lord. No, no, faith, I'll sing as well enough. And he had been a dog that should have howled thus, they'd have hanged him. Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today? That your niece, Beatrice, was in love with Signor Benedict? I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behaviors seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Maybe she doth but counterfeit faith, like enough. Oh, God! Counterfeit! There was never counterfeit of passion came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why? What effects of passion shows she? Bait the hook well, this fish will bite. What effects, my lord? You heard my daughter tell you how? She did indeed. How, I pray you. You amaze me! Oh, I should think this a trick, but that the grey-bearded fellow speaks it. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? No, I swear she never will. That's her torment. She'll be up 20 times a night. And there will she sit in her smock till she have writ a sheet of paper. Then down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict, God give me patience. She does indeed. My daughter says so. My daughter is sometimes afeard that she will do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. It were good that Benedict knew of it. What end? He would make but a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. I'm sorry for her. I pray you, tell Benedict of it and hear what he will say. Were it good, think you? Hero thinks surely she will die. For she says she will die if he love her not, and she will die ere she make her love known, and she will die if he woo her. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it. For the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. Oh! Ah, 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 I love Benedict well, and I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much he is unworthy so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. <laughs> if he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectations. Let the same net be spread for her, and that must your daughter and a gentlewoman carry. Let us send Beatrice to call him in to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. <laughs> Love me! Why? It must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say, too, that she will rather die than give any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happy are they that hear their detractions and can put them to mending. They say the lady is fair, tis a truth, I can bear them witness, and virtuous, tis so, I cannot reprove it, and wise, <laughs> but for loving me, by my truth, it is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance 
have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me because I have railed so long against marriage. But does not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall these quips and sentences and paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humour? No! The world must be peopled! When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. There! Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. There, Beatrice! I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure, then, in the message? Yea, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point. <laughs> you have no stomach, Signor? Fare you well. <laughs> 